Gal took up a day's late. Da o she beats a hole. We kick at the lay. Da o she beats a hole. Gal took up a day's late. Da o she beats a hole. We kick at the lay. The Indian people, the, well, the young Indians today, are are caught between two cultures. The the white man is pulling the Indian people into their culture, but the Indians have always been brought up to be Indians. You know, they've lived the Indian way all their lives, and they're caught between these two. And uh, they're, I feel that they're. Um, the Indians are really mixed up, you know, because the only way they can make it in this society is to be a white man, but they can't. You know, the young Indians today are realizing that this society is sick and that they don't want to have any part of it. I mean, you know, like they know that, uh, like during Geronimo's days and during Crazy Horse's days, that uh, the white man killed our people and they're doing the same thing here today. They're killing our people because the way this system is set up, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And uh, in the old days, the Indians weren't that way. When their uh, brothers or sisters were uh, they couldn't make it, then, then they were there right there to help them. And I, and I think, you know, like the Bureau of Indian Affairs, you know, they, uh, they're set up to... Uh, to help the Indians to uh, make settlements for the Indian people, but they're selling uh, selling the Indian people down the drain. They, the schools that they set up are uh, are below the standard, the regular standard of education of a pub public school, and they they make the Indians ashamed of what they are. But the Indians have something that the that the white man will never have. They have a culture that they could be proud of, that they should be proud of. and there would be game wardens all over the landing here. They would be chasing my dad around. Allison Gottfriedson grew up on her grandfather's land, a place near Olympia known as Frank's Landing. As they had for generations, her family fished the Nisqually River on and off the reservation, a right guaranteed by treaty. I didn't know why my dad was being beat up. I remember being afraid a lot, but I didn't know what was going on, really. In those days, wardens of the Washington Fish and Game Department often arrested Indians and seized their boats for violating state fishing laws. By the 1960s, most of Allison's relatives and friends had been to jail for fishing, but imprisonment didn't stop them. The fish was our way of life. The fish was our culture. And if we wanted our children to carry on as Native Americans, we didn't have anything to lose. Inspired by the civil rights movement, they began organizing protests. Sympathizers joined them for marches and fishings. Tension mounted as the state sent armed patrols to stop the demonstrations. There was probably five, six hundred riot police there at the time. I didn't think any of us were gonna make it out of that because uh, there was gunfire. I remember thinking that if we were all killed, that it would make a difference. 